Donald Trump is behind in the swing states. He's currently freaking out about that. And the Sun Belt numbers are not looking great for him either. But when you go beyond just the results in the states and talk to people about how they see the candidates, I actually find that to be way more interesting. And so when you poll them, and Fox News did, who do you think will do a better job of uniting the country? Kamala Harris has a seven point lead, which is good. I also think the idea that 44% of the country is saying that Donald Trump will unite the country is it's a, it's a farce. They don't mean it when they say it. They mean we'll be in power and they like that. But regardless, she's winning. Uh, who will do a better job of fighting for people like you? She's winning in that, which is certainly not bad for the you know quote unquote status quo candidate to, uh, to be in that position. But even bringing needed change, she's up by one. That's supposed to be like the one thing he can run on, you know, because he pretends that he's some sort of non establishment candidate, despite the fact that he has ruled the Republican Party for a decade and was president for four years. He would have you believe that he's a change candidate, but even the Fox News poll respondents are not buying it. And in addition, Harris has a four point favorability rating over Trump. Walls has an eight point favorability rating over Vance. I don't know if that's before or after Donut Gate, but we'll find out. And when you go to the actual policy areas, it's not all you know roses and ice cream for Kamala Harris. On some of these topics, Trump continues to lead, including on immigration and border security. He has an eight point lead on the economy. He has a lead on the Israel Hamas war. Apparently, a narrow majority of the American people just want you know Gaza to be nuked or whatever. But on topics like healthcare and abortion, obviously, people trust Kamala Harris more. Now, I will put the context in that there's a Reuters Ipsos poll from just three days ago where Trump's lead on the economy is just three points now. And in that same poll, he led on the economy by 11 points last month. So his lead has fallen from 11 to three points in just a month. And that is important because when you ask me what the top issue is, the economy still far and away leads at 41%. Other topics that you might expect are there like immigration and abortion, healthcare, but they're not even close to the economy. And so if she's narrowing his lead on that, if she can get it down to just a couple of points while also pitching herself apparently successfully as the change candidate, that's really gonna hurt Donald Trump. And the thing about it is like, it's kind of ridiculous that there's even a few points worth of people who believe that he's gonna be better on the economy. When you take a look at the campaign policy proposals he's made, they are a recipe for a massive increase to the deficit and the national debt to the tune of $5.8 trillion. Now those orange bars are the things he's proposed that will cost money. The blue bars are the things that will raise money. And you'll notice that there's no blue bars there because he hasn't proposed literally anything that would raise money for the government. It's just cost. Now by comparison, when you take a look at all the things that Kamala Harris has promised, it does raise the deficit by 1.2 trillion. So less than a quarter what Donald Trump's would because she actually raises a little bit of money and she's not just handing a couple trillion dollars to the wealthiest people in the country. So you can sort of see how the math works out there. And none of this, by the way, should be surprising because when you look at what he did in the four years he was president, he added of, I think at that point, it was about $7 trillion to the national debt in just four years. And to make it even more ridiculous, he said before he became president that in eight years, he'll pay down the national debt entirely. There will be no national debt. Now, in his defense, he didn't get the eight years and knock on wood, he never will. But he had the four years and it went up to $28 trillion. And very importantly, and the reason that I wanna put this here is that a lot of you might think, oh, well, the de the deficit national debt went up under Trump because of COVID. Like, yeah, that was part of it. But if you look at that chart, half of the increase to the national deficit, so the deficit in the national debt, happened before the pandemic was actually declared. And this should not be surprising at all. He took trillions of dollars and just handed them a massive present to people who already have more money than they could ever spend in their entire lives if they lived to be 250 years old. And so we don't get to be surprised if he does it again. You ask yourself, if the economy is as important to you as you say it is, who do you want to be the steward of that economy? The guy who's gonna set fire to it? so that the rich can become slightly richer, or the person who has plans that will actually benefit regular people. Just something to think about.
Members make a difference here at TYT. You help make the show happen and we see you in the chat with your loyalty badge. Click the join button to become a member today.